So probably the most um, iconic Highland Games event um, that, that sort of springs to mind for most people would be the Caber. Um, the Caber is, is an accuracy event rather than a, a distance event. As with a lot of things Highland Games, there can be some local variation. Uh, there is no standard weight or length of caber, but generally speaking, you can be anything between 17 to, I believe the world record's 24 feet um, for a caber, and the, the weight is less important than the overall density and, and length um, of the caber. A longer caber is arguably um, harder to turn than a, a shorter, heavier caber. What we're looking at is the thrower will present themselves to the thin end of the caber and uh, a, a, a judge or the previous competitor will assist them with it. Um, as you can see here, picking up the heavy end and walking in towards the, the competitor who's about to throw. Once the thrown competitor's confirmed that they have control of the caber, um, the other person then steps away and you are entirely on your own to do, uh, <laughs> do as you see fit with the caber. The technique would be, once, you, once you're confident you have the balance, it's a clasping of the fingers around uh, the caber, and as you can see here, the, the caber's got three points of contact, really. It's, it's on the ground, it's in the hands, and it's on the, the shoulder. As you work your way down towards the bottom of the caber, what we're looking to be doing is get down to the sort of tapered end here, squeezing it between the hands, squeezing it in between the, 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 the heels of the hands, pressing it in towards the shoulder, and you're almost looking for a sort of wee pop up. Uh, obviously, if the caber's leaning too far back, we're going to lose control of it when it comes up. And if the caber's leaning too far far forward, uh, or if it's too straight, as soon as we make that pop, it's going to be wanting to get away from us. So we need to make sure we're getting that balance of feeling enough weight on the shoulder and having enough control on the hands. Once we've squeezed it in between the hands, a little pop up, get your hands underneath it and stand up with it. So we're looking to, we're looking to support the caber again. Sometimes it's personal preference, but it's roundabouts at a belly area you're looking to carry. Um, the cable are too low and you don't really have enough bounce to sort of pull it and if it's too high you're going to sort of lose control of it. Now you've got to think if we're talking sort of 17 to 20 foot for a cable, you're carrying it here, you've only got that amount under control, the rest of the cables are way up in space. So that's why the, uh, the, the, the concept of the longer cable actually being more complicated because there's a lot more wood up there. So to get this end over end, what we're doing is we're looking to run forward, get a little bit of momentum into the heavy end of the caber that's, that's up in air, and the quicker that's moving, the easier it'll be to turn the caber. So again, I said, it's not a, a distance event most of the time, it's an accuracy event. So if you imagine we are, uh, if, you, if, if you had an eagle eye view, um, the thrower would be running onto a clock face. So again, imagine the clock face, we've run in, we're at six o'clock, boom, we've hit the caber, the heavy end should hit the middle of the clock face where the hands come and if we've got enough momentum we would be looking for it to go end over end and you're wanting the narrow end that was in your hands to be hitting 12 o'clock. So that's the general idea. Um, however, cabers are designed, uh, the point the purpose of the competition is that the cabers should only be able to be tossed, um, as, as the throws referred to, um, by the top two or three athletes on the field. Um, it's not much of a spectacle if everybody can rock along and do it. So, um, How else the, the cabers is marked? So it's marked on accuracy, so obviously the straighter it is. So from the point where you are uh, running, throwing, you stand still, and you are then marked on how uh, straight the caber is. Again, worked off a clock face, and the score works on minutes, so either 12 o'clock is a perfect 12, that would be your sort of perfect throw, and then you're worked on minutes, either minutes two or minutes past 12, uh, depending on how far it's gone over. Not everybody's gonna get that, of course, um, so we have side judges, um, who are also looking at once the cable is tossed and the heavy end hits the ground, they are marking the um, angle of the cable. Once the heavy end hits the ground, how high up 
does the light end go before it turns over? And either it turns over and you get marked on time, or it doesn't quite turn over and you get marked on the distance of this angle here. Because again, it's, it's, as I said, it's, it's only really the sort of top two or three that should be able to toss the, um, the heavier of the cables. <laughs> 